So this week, NASA and Virgin Galactic announced some new spacesuits. They're certainly interesting, very innovative, and uh, let's dive into it. So three spacesuits were announced this week, one from Virgin Galactic to wear on board their spaceship spacecraft, which they are now in production of, and two more spacesuits from NASA to wear on board the Orion spacecraft and on the surface of the moon. The two spacesuits from NASA are pretty distinct. Uh, you have your the orange one, which is the IVA suit, the intravehicular activity suit, which is to be worn on launch and landing. It's orange, uh, which is no surprise considering the later iterations of the space shuttle IVA suits were orange, and that is primarily for survival purposes. We'll dive into that in a few minutes. Now, when you compare this suit to the shuttle space suit, extremely, extremely similar. From what it looks like, the helmets are identical. The gloves are very similar. It looks a little bit sleeker on this new modern suit. And the big design change I'm seeing is in the boots. It looks like they have the crew wearing like a sneaker type of footwear. Should be much more comfortable and really more practical because you're really not marching through any kind of wilderness in spacecraft. Now, when you see these suits, they're orange. And as I mentioned earlier, that is for survival purposes. If you're out in the ocean and you need somebody to spot you, you want to be a contrasting color to that wide blue. Well, the opposite color of blue is orange. So NASA for safety purposes has chosen to stick with the orange suits for the crew launch and landing. Um, I think that this is super practical. Yes, orange isn't exactly a sexy color, but if you're bouncing around in the ocean by yourself and you need a helicopter to spot you, uh, it's a great way to do it. To stick with the IVA suits, we're going to now jump to Virgin Galactic's space suits. Now, I know Virgin Galactic isn't officially branding this as a space suit, more as space wear, but the news media all over the world has been calling this a space suit. And guys, we gotta be honest, this is not a space suit. If anything, this is a flight suit. Just let's start on a very, very foundational definition of a spacesuit. Just go to dictionary.com and we are going to type in space suit. Space suit, a sealed and pressurized suit designed to allow the wearer to leave a pressurized cabin in outer space or at extremely high altitudes within the atmosphere. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but these suits are not pressure suits. They're more of just garments to wear that are fancy. They look awesome, don't get me wrong. Huge kudos to Under Armour and the Virgin Galactic team for designing something that people will want to wear, not only on spacecraft, but out and about. But this is not a spacesuit, this is a flight suit. There is some imagery in their promo video showing people wearing helmets, but those are high altitude safety helmets that oftentimes uh, skydivers will wear. Maybe they'll be pumping oxygen into them, but it is in no way a pressure suit. And if the, there's a decompression of the cabin during flight, it's not gonna help the crew survive. You're gonna have a bad time. Now, a flight suit is typically fire retarded to protect the crew member in case of a fire. So I'm sure that it has safety measures like that. Also, it's meant to regulate the temperature of the crew member. So the suit has a lot of great features. Don't get me wrong. It is gonna be something that I wish I could get. I still want to get in twisted that this suit is equal to what Boeing or SpaceX or NASA is putting out with their space suits, both EVA and IVA suits, extra vehicle activity suits and intra vehicular activity suits. It's just not the same. Great looking suit, the gold flakes. I mean, come on, when I go to space, do I wear the gold flakes? I mean, I don't know. Anyways, it is a flight suit, not a space suit. Last but not least, we have NASA's XEMU suit, which is interesting looking to say the least. Now, besides the colors, it's an awesome spacesuit. Uh, it is way more mobile than the previous iterations of spacesuits. It is able to be upgradable, which is huge. For those of you who don't know, the spacesuits used on board the International Space Station have been largely unchanged over the last 30 plus years. When they were designed, they weren't designed to be upgradable down the line. They're very solid suits, but they're not very flexible. You can't walk in them, and you can't also reach over your head. You can work right in front of you and down below you, but anything over your head is not gonna happen, which extremely restricts you know, the capabilities of what an astronaut can do on orbit or on the surface of another body. So these suits are modular, so they can upgrade different components, the arms, the legs, the torso, the helmets, 
as technology evolves, which is great, and also is lighter than the moon suits that were used during the Apollo era, as well as just more flexibility. Now the torso twists around, uh, astronauts can easily squat down and pick up things off the surface, and they can walk. They don't have to bounce. They can just walk on the surface, which is going to increase the comfort of the astronauts as hopefully the better we get at staying on the surface of the moon, the longer we will be there and comfort is going to be very important. The big downside of the suit is just the color. The colors are terrible. It just looks like somebody took an American flag and just rinsed it out or something over top of it. I went and uh, did NASA a favor and I made a couple tweaks. So this is the before and this is the after. I think you would agree that removing the blue would be just a good choice in terms of a color scheme. Now, when you see red stripes on a suit, um, they're there for a reason. Typically during any EVA moment, there's two crew members. You have an EVA one and an EVA two, or the EVA one is basically the leader of that EVA. And then you have the second astronaut who takes orders from the first one. And so that you can easily discern who is who when you're not out there. If you're inside the ISS and you see two white suits out in space, it's hard to really tell which is which. So they put the commander in a red stripe. And that started at Apollo 12, I believe. Houston, we have a problem. These suits are very interesting to say the least. I don't think they really needed to iterate too much on the IVA suit that was used in the shuttle. It's pretty simple. You're basically just wearing a bubble and it's pressurized for a very short period of time. So mobility isn't really a priority outside of just reaching up and being able to flick a switch. The Virgin Galactic suit is a flight suit. Really, that's, that's what it is. But people are going to look great in it. And I think it was a good opportunity for them to show what the future of space apparel could look like. And then last but not least, the XEMU suit from NASA. Huge leaps in technology. They've been working on this design for like 30 years. You probably recognize major components of it from previous iterations that were released by NASA, but needless to say, NASA, great steps forward to getting us ready for going back to the moon and please just remove the blue. Anyways, that's it, wrapping up. Hopefully this was a good overview for you guys. Uh, hope you consider subscribing and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.